Hey designers, welcome to the first tutorial in the series where we push Figma to its limits. Today, I'll show you how to achieve cursor tracking without any plugins or third-party apps. I'd like to share the whole process of discovering this technique with you, but if you want a simple step-by-step -step guide, you can skip it straight to the last section. And for those who just want to use it right away, instead of watching boring tutorials, I've created a Figma community file, so be sure to check the link in the description. The idea isn't new, and you may have already seen attempts to mimic this behavior in Figma, either using Spline and Anima plugin, or something like this. The first approach requires you to use two additional services, so we'll skip it. The second option is more interesting to us. It's based on a single interactive component that, when hovered, switches from empty cell to a cell with some content. Instances of that component then arranged in a grid, so moving the cursor activates cells on its path, creating the illusion of following. Unfortunately, while being a solution, components are also a problem. At this cell size, the movement looks quite jittery. But when you make cells smaller, it gets worse instead of improving, because you also increase their number. And each time when you add an instance, you make your prototype just a little bit slower. It's not noticeable when you're working with your everyday buttons, but in our case the scale increases dramatically because we need thousands of instances. So I started looking for other solutions and found the first piece of the puzzle in quite an unexpected place. It was… scroll to interaction. What is it and how does it work exactly? When triggered, it scrolls a target frame to the top edge of the parent container if it's vertical scroll and to the left edge if horizontal. Seems simple enough, right? But there are a couple of secrets that can help us bring it to a whole new level. Let's create a simple prototype to discover them. Start with the frame of arbitrary size as a base. Add the frame inside and call it Position. I also added a random color fill for demonstrational purposes, but in the real case it should be invisible. Then duplicate it and rename to Trigger. This one has one pixel border instead of a fill, which also should be invisible in the real case. Now go to Prototype tab and simply drag the connector from the frame back to itself. It will automatically link to the frame below with the correct interaction selected. Make sure it uses Instant Transition instead of Animate. Also, change it from Unclick to While Hovering. Now select both frames, press Option and While Holding drag them to the right to create a copy. With the frame still selected, press and hold Command D until the whole width of the parent frame is filled. Usually you'd want to set the trigger scrolling behavior to fixed to avoid scrolling them along with the content, but there is another way which will also help us later. Select all trigger frames and press Option Command G to wrap them in a frame and name it Horizontal Triggers. Then do the same with all position frames. Set scrolling behavior of horizontal position to horizontal. If you try running a prototype, nothing will happen, because scroll requires overflowing content to work. That's why you need to reduce the width of the horizontal position to a single cell. Now we can actually see something, but it works backwards. This is an easy fix though. Just select the horizontal triggers and flip it, you guessed it, horizontally. As you can see, we made this line follow the cursor. This is just an example, but you can easily apply it to much smaller cells. What you could do now is use the same principle to enable vertical tracking as well. I mean, that's what I did when I discovered it. And it even works. Kinda. Unfortunately, it turns into this beautiful mess and also lags quite noticeably, so I won't explain you how to do this in detail especially considering that I found a much better option. And that's actually where I've spent the most of the time working on this project. It took me over 30 versions and more than 100 hours to figure it out and polish. So what was improved? With the initial approach, each cell in the grid represents a pair of coordinates – horizontal and vertical. But in truth, this approach is rather inefficient. Let's do quick math. For example, our frame is 1440 by 900. If we use 8x8 pixel cells for our grid, which is the most optimal from my experience, it would require more than 20,000 cells to cover all possible combinations, 
And don't forget about triggers, so the number is actually doubled. Instead, we could set horizontal and vertical positions separately. First the column, and after that the row, or vice versa. This way we would only need about 300 cells, or 400 including triggers. Well, sounds good in theory, but there is a big problem. We need to somehow combine two interactions, for columns and for rows, occupying the same space. And you can't simply stack two similar interactions on top of each other, because the top one blocks what's below it. To solve that problem, I need to bring components back. Yep, the very same components I discarded at the beginning. So, what's changed? First, in this case, instead of thousands of instances, we need only about a hundred, which is a pretty reasonable amount. But what's more important, they have one almost magical property, which I discovered during my experiments. It seems when an interactive component changes its state, it becomes sort of transparent to the interaction below it, allowing it to trigger as well. To apply it to a case, we need to adjust the existing structure first. Select both horizontal triggers and horizontal position frames and hit Enter to select their content. Set constraints to top and bottom and disable clip content. I also deleted all fields and borders because they've served their purpose. Then go back one level by pressing Shift plus Enter and resize everything vertically to fill the parent frame. Now we need an interactive cell component. Create a square frame of the same width at a single column, 12 pixels in our case. Remove the fill and disable clip content. Then click here twice to create a component and then a variant. In the prototyping mode, connect the variants with an instant while hovering interaction. And finally, add your desired cursor shape, which can be larger than a cell itself into the second variant and center it on both axes. After that, take the default variant, copy-paste it at the top of the rightmost position frame, which is conveniently the first frame in the list, align it to the top and duplicate it all the way to the bottom, the same way as we did before. At the moment, we have column triggers above the stack of components, blocking their interactions. To fix it, simply drag the horizontal position frame above the triggers. And that's why we needed to wrap them in a separate frames earlier. It wouldn't be possible with the conventional approach. It's almost there, but if you move the cursor rapidly, you may see it disappearing or flickering. It happens because there is not enough time for the component to react. To account for that, simply select all instances and increase their widths in both directions. And there you have it almost as good as a real cursor tracking. But of course it's still a hack and not a perfect solution, so it's somewhat limited and depending on the grid resolution may be laggy on slower hardware. If this is the case, simply use larger cells, therefore decreasing their number. Now let's quickly recap the process of its creation once again, just to put everything in order. Create a parent frame. Add a vertical frame inside and call it position. The recommended width is 8 pixels. Disable clip content. Duplicate it and name it Trigger. Switch to the Prototype tab and link Trigger to Position simply by dragging a connector back to itself. Change the interaction to While Hovering and make sure it uses Instant Transition. Select both frames and duplicate them all the way to the right side of the parent frame. Select all triggers wrap them in a frame and call it horizontal triggers. Do the same to all position frames. Move the horizontal position frame above triggers, set its scrolling behavior to horizontal and reduce its width to match the width of a single cell. Flip the horizontal triggers frame horizontally. Create a square frame outside. Its dimensions should be equal to the width of a single cell. Remove its fill and disable clip content. Click here to create a component and again to add a variant. Put the shape of your cursor inside the second variant and center it on both axes. Connect the variants with the instant while hovering interaction. Copy the default variant and put it in the rightmost position frame. 
increase its width. And finally, duplicate the instance all the way to the bottom. And that's how you can get yourself a working custom cursor using nothing but Figma's basic functionality. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be glad to share with you even more secrets of this technique, so let me know if you're interested in the comments. Meanwhile, you can find some of the secrets in the file I mentioned at the beginning, so definitely check it out. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.